You know, it is said that there are always three kinds of people in any given society. This threefold distinction has been noted and made by notable sociologists and public intellectuals. But this threefold distinction of the three kinds of people, it was first identified and first stated by the supporters and founders of democracy in ancient Greece. For the Greek people, the people who in many ways gave us the modern civilized world. For the Greek people, the first kind of people in any given society are the idiots. For the Greeks, the idiot is not necessarily someone who is mentally deficient. Rather, for ancient Greek people, the idiot, they said, is someone who is a totally private person, a totally self-centered person, and a totally selfish person. They called him the idiot. The idiot, he is always out for his personal gain and his personal interests. He does not have a public philosophy. He has no knowledge, no skill, no character, and no virtues to be able to live and to be able to contribute in a flourishing society and community. He is all out for his personal pleasures and for his personal treasures. And the Greeks said that the idiot was just an upgraded barbarian. The first kind of person, the idiot. But the Greeks also said that there is a second kind of people in any given society. And the Greeks called these people the tribes people. When we say tribes people, we don't necessarily mean the fact of belonging to a certain tribe, which is a good thing. But when they use the word tribes people, the Greeks meant a tribal and a tribalistic mentality. And the Greeks said that tribes people are those people who are not able to think beyond their small tribe or their small groups. For tribes people, their primary allegiance, their only allegiance, and their ultimate allegiance is to their tribe. Their tribe is their God and their religion is tribalism. And tribes people, Greeks, the Greeks said, are always afraid of things that are different, that are a little alien to them. They are always suspicious and fearful. And they always dealt with different people and difficult situations with intimidation, with force, and with violence. And the Greeks also said that the ideal person for tribes people is the warrior. Because tribes people are a war-making people. Their ideal is the warrior. But it was not so for the Greeks. For the Greeks, there was another kind of people. Another kind of a person. And that was the ideal person. And the Greeks called this ideal person the citizen. The citizen. And here when we use the word citizen, we are not talking about legal status or political status. We are talking about the idea and the ideal of citizenship. And who is the citizen? The citizen, according to the Greeks, is someone who has the skills and the knowledge to live a public life. Who is able to live a life of civility. The citizen recognizes that he or she is a member of a commonwealth and thus strives for the common good. That is the citizen. The citizen, yes, he knows, he or she knows his or her rights in a society. But he or she also knows his or her responsibilities to society. The citizen can fight for his rights but always, always with an awareness of and with a respect for the rights and interests of others, of their neighbors, 
of the smallest of minorities and of the worst of their enemies. And it is citizens, the Greek said, that make and that make up a civilized society. Because citizens settle their differences with civility. So they produce a civilized society. A society that truly lives up to the name, to the meaning of the name society. Society literally means friendship and friendliness. That is the threefold distinction that the Greeks have given us. That is the choice that each and every individual, wherever he or she may be, has to make in a society. And I believe that that is the choice that starkly faces us Naga people today. Will we be idiots living only for ourselves? Will we be tribal, tribalistic, tribes people, unable to think beyond our tribes and our small groups? Or will we be citizens? Citizens in the best sense of the word. Today on this historic day, I believe I want to make my choice. And I also believe that you will want to make your choice. And I hope you and I will take that right choice. And it is with that hope that I want to finally address you, ladies and gentlemen.